Hi, grace and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Ralph Hill from Mount Horeb Lutheran Church, and each day Pastor Joanna Gregg and I look forward to dwelling with you in the Word. Uh, we use the scripture readings from Christ in our home devotional guide. And today, which is uh, November 10th, it's a Tuesday, we're going to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 6 through 13. So here are these words. But Timothy has now come to us from you and has brought us the good news of your faith and love, writes Paul. He's told us also that you always remember us kindly and long to see us just as we long to see you. For this reason, brothers and sisters, during all our distress and persecution, we've been encouraged about you through your faith. For now we live if you continue to stand firm in the Lord. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. May also strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. So as you dwell on this, um, what jumps out at you or stands out? What questions might this raise for you in this time of your life, in your faith? And what nudge might you feel from you as you read these words, as you experience God's spirit kind of welling up in you to say, wow, I'm, I feel this impact today from reading this portion of, of scripture. The verse that uh, jumped out at me today is verse 12. And it says, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all. I think the reason that jumps out at me uh, is because, you know, we are social creatures and we are meant to live in community. Um, relationships are important to us. In fact, they're vital for us. This reminded me, though, of when I was in college, um, I was an engineering student turned, and then later I turned into a biology student, but I had to take a kind of a mandatory psychology 101 course my freshman year. And one, one of the ahas that I took away from the course was just a, a formal recognition of feelings and experiences that I had had in informal ways in my growing up years. You know, there were terms now that the course taught me, the professor taught me, to describe personality and social behavior. Oh, that's what that means to be that way or to do that thing or to, you know, whatever it was. And I learned that, um, that we have personalities and the personalities differ so that I may not think the same way that you might not think and vice versa, but there's a, a collective sense of putting this all together. There are at least a couple different ways. There was a Myers-Briggs inventory based on a couple of professors or psychologists that put together an inventory that helped us kind of learn a little bit more about ourselves. And one talked about where we might focus our attention. And our, so are we extroverted or are we more introverted? Extroverts kind of think out loud and they do their thinking in the air between conversations. Introverts might take a thought and ponder it uh, differently, so they think about it more internally. Either way, we're both thinking, we're both responding to something. It's just how we do it is different. Um, another might be the way that we take in information. Some of us might be sensing type people. Some might be intuition type people. Uh, or how we think about our decisions that we make. Some of us are thinkers. Some of us are feelers. And so how does that affect us? And then how we deal with the world. Um, are we judges, you know, looking at other people, or are we perceivers, where we kind of see the landscape um, for what it is? And anyway, there's, those are just all impactful ways that we are individually wired. Um, and I also read that according to human need psychologies, that there are six basic needs that are universal for human beings that we all try to fulfill in varying degrees. The first one is certainty. Uh, that we have a need for security and stability and reliability. But you know what's funny? Is that once we have certainty, the next need is variety or uncertainty. You know, we have a need for change in a sense or stimulation or challenge. However, we still need that base foundation first. Um, so we need the certainty, but then once we have it, we feel more 
apt to want to go out and explore a little bit, but then we always have kind of a base camp. The a third one, a need that we have is significance, that we have a need, a need to feel acknowledged and recognized and valued. The fourth is the, a key, it's love and connection, that there's a need to love and to feel loved. It's a two-way street and to feel a connection with others. Um, the fifth one is growth, that we need to grow, to improve, to develop both in character and in spirit. Um, I had a great professor, a mentor one time that used to tell me, um, used to say the phrase, they're only excellent mistakes because mistakes are the way that we learn about how not to do something. Uh, but it teaches us volumes about how to do something. So we need to grow. And then contribution. Don't, you know, we have a need to give, to help others, to make a difference. And when we don't contribute, we're missing a part of who we are as a human being. So it's in discovering this, um, which needs are most important to us and how we try to meet them in our own personality is kind of a, an important step towards having more harmony in our lives or in a religious term, um, more peace. We have a sense of peace and balance because the spirit of God is at life in us. And love and connection is the key. You know, it's without love, we lose our sight. Uh, as someone said, being admired by many but loved by few may not be conduct, uh, conducive to happiness. Um, and then they quoted a Shakespeare quote, heavy lies the head that bears the crown. Um, I think another way somebody has put it, it's lonely at the top, you know, or something like that. It's one thing to be admired by people or recognized, but sometimes you feel by yourself if you don't really have a true loving connection with people where you're able to be yourself, let your hair down, so to speak. Um, and one of the reasons God chose to send himself into the world through Jesus was to bring love, to bring this compassion and mercy as a human uh, creation with each other to a people where the strict adherence to the law was beginning to stifle them and they lost sight of the importance of love. Uh, and so the intended natural rhythm of life was out of rhythm and God came back to, to bring a balance back that he says, abide in me and then go out and do the work of there's this natural rhythm that you have as a creation. And Paul's letter today, well, it's written to reach out to a people with whom he's been in relationship. He sees their need and he's encouraging them now to embrace God's gift for how we relate to one another, which is through love. That God's love is key for all the other needs. And he says to them, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all. And then he adds, you know, and strengthen your hearts in holiness. It's our differences that make us unique and diverse, but the quality which unites and strengthens individuals and families and communities and even nations is love. It's compassion. It's care for each other and what we have. Love, love uh, that Paul says is kind of like the glue that holds the pieces uh, together. Uh, when a, you know, a plate or a special vase that someone gives you breaks, what do you do when you try to keep it? You get some glue out and put the pieces back together, right? Or when a, a child works on a special collage or an art project at preschool, what holds it together? Yeah, it's good old Elmer's glue. When I was about 10, I had a friend of mine with whom I would put together model race cars. We used to like to watch drag racing. Um, and we would each buy a special model car kit. I don't even know if they sell them. I guess they do still. But we would sit for hours sorting out all the, the many, many pieces. And we would then put them together, glue them together to make the engine and the doors and the chassis and the bumpers and the lights. But it's without the glue, the pieces would remain unassembled. Love is our glue. And it's a, it's a universal command for us as a people of faith from the beginning of time. And it makes the difference. It bridges the gap. It, it provides the motivation. It heals the human heart. There's a great hymn, there is a balm in Gilead that heals the sin-sick soul. Um, and that balm we find in John 3.16 reminds us, God so loved the world, he gave his only son. We humans are the world, and yes, we have work to do. The daily grind can be real, responsibility is real, but without love, we lose meaning. Without love, we lose sight of our creator and the intention of our being. We're the pieces of this beautiful mosaic held together by God's love. And it's a gift to know someone who loves you. 
Think of the love that you have and share with others in your life today. And call someone and just reconnect. You don't have to even say the words. You don't, but because love will speak volumes without words. Just make the call or make a contact or write a note and you will be sharing love. And most importantly today, know that you are loved. You know, when one of the great theologians, Karl Barth, was asked about the profound meaning of scripture and if he could summarize his theology in a single sentence, Barth responded by saying, in the words of a song that I learned at my mother's knee, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And he sang that song. Today, Paul says to us, as he said to the Thessalonians, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for the day, for the gift of your love that helps us to balance out all the intricacies of life. But help us to know it deeply enough so that we can fulfill our calling as your people each day. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, grace and peace. Have a great day.